Hey everybody, how you doing? This is Vicious and welcome to an introductory video about actually upgrading the wireless access points in my house, AKA the Wi-Fi. And yes, you did read the title correctly. I'm getting rid of my ubiquity stuff. Why would anybody want to do that? Well, let me explain to you. There's a couple of reasons. Uh, one, I like playing with enterprise gear. I mean, look behind me, there's a full server rack there with Dell servers, Aruba switches, Brocade switches, I got ESXi, I got VMware, I got Linux. I've got a bunch of crap around here. I do this stuff for fun and I do it for a living. So I want to play with some new enterprise gear. But there's also some actual real life reasons as well. And that's because I've been having some performance issues with my ubiquity access points. Uh, the very first one I ever got was the Ubiquity, uh, this is the ACLR, this is the long range unit. And then not too long ago, I got, I was very, very excited about this. This is the Ubiquity AC Nano HD. This is a really cool access point too. Uh, apparently my Nano HD was probably defective because as I was doing my wireless testing yesterday to get the before and after results so that I could have a really good performance benchmarks to see if this was actually better in any way, shape or form. I found that I was dropping packets on the Nano HD. The, the LC, uh, the, the long range unit was, was doing fine. But despite that, even if these were working 100% perfectly, the new unit, which is a Ruckus R600, is actually performing better. I'm getting better signal strength. I like some of the, pro uh, the features built into it. It's more enterprise-esque. Uh, and it's just as easy to configure and use. And actually, the cost of these, now that they're you know, old news in the enterprise world on eBay, is cheaper than any one of, either one of those. So the, uh, let me go over like kind of what's going on here. So the, the, this one here, the long range unit, is really good for 2.4 gigahertz, but it has really crappy 5 gigahertz. The, uh, the long range model I bought because it was advertised as being really good with mobile devices with the special antennas inside of it. Most of the stuff here in this house is mobile devices if it's on the wireless network. However, and actually testing that in real life, it doesn't really make a difference because it's more marketing hype than anything else. Just because the access point can reach out further doesn't mean that the device can reach back far enough to get to the access point. So it's kind of a moot point. Then this little Nano HD, as cool as it is, is not that great either because it has super good 5 gigahertz, but they really, really nerfed the 2.4 gigahertz. And as much as I thought I could do mostly 5 gigahertz in this home, it really, it's not the case because my printer over there, 2.4 gigahertz, my laptop before behind me, 2.4 gigahertz, my, all my smart switches all over the house, 2.4 gigahertz. There's too many devices here that need 2.4 gigahertz and they need a good strong signal. So that's not really a good fit either. In retrospect, probably the best ubiquity access points for me without going into the real high dollar stuff, like the new, just the uh, the regular HD model, would have been the Pro model, the UAPAC Pro, which is a 3x3 single user MIMO Wave 1 device, which is exactly the same as what the Ruckus R600 is. <clears throat> MSRP on those is like 150 bucks, street price a little bit cheaper. I got these on eBay. They look like they're brand new. There's no scuffs, there's no marks. Uh, the box came with the, the book and it came with the mounting hardware. So I'm pretty sure they're brand new. Got them for $115 each. So I actually got these cheaper than the Ubiquiti. The other thing about Ubiquiti as well, it's very cool about it is the Ubiquiti Unify stuff has that single pane of glass. So you can see your switches, your access points, your firewall. You get all of your data in one place. Um, however, 80% of that cool data that I would really want to look at requires me to have Ubiquiti firewall which I would never have because I use PFSense. And PFSense is just so much more powerful and so much more customizable and it's free. I just took an old server and installed it and got it up and going. So I lost 80% of the benefit of the Unify environment immediately. And then I got Ubiquity switches. Ubiquity switches aren't as cheap as their access points. If you want PoE, you really gotta pay out the nose for it. The bigger PoE switches are very loud compared to the quiet stuff like right behind me. There's two Aruba switches running right now and they're dead silent. Um, and then if you want 10 gigabit connectivity, then you really got to start paying serious money. So you lose the value in the Ubiquity Unify switches, and therefore if you're not using the switches, you lose another benefit of the Unify environment. So basically, after I took my Ubiquity switches out and replaced them with the Aruba switches, the only thing I had left was the access points. And my access point, one of them was giving me trouble, and I just wanted to try some new gear out. So I'm pretty much ripping Ubiquity out of the house, and it's not going to be here anymore. Um, <clears throat> The other cool thing about the Ruckus R600 is 
being an enterprise grade uh, dri uh, not drive access point back in the day you had to buy a uh, wireless controller for it which means you had to have a license on your access point and a license on your controller and in an enterprise world uh, the licenses cost you more than the hardware usually but you can also put standalone firmware on it which is completely free doesn't cost you anything and now they have this new unleashed which is what we're going to go over in the next video which acts almost like the ubiquity unify it is a single pane of glass to see all of your access points and basically one of your access points becomes the master and then you log into it and you can see all your other access points in one place it's super easy to configure super easy to see everything to do everything it performs better than a unified environment and it still has more enterprise features built into it than the unified environment so i'm super impressed i can tell you without going into all the test results that I have about 15 percent stronger signal strength with the r600 than i did with either one of those it's a strong 5 gigahertz a strong 2.4 gigahertz has more features i've got low balancing i've got uh, fast roaming i've got a really cool features enabled for all of these different things it has all the different enterprise features I would expect and it doesn't cost me a dime more than just buying the access point. Onto the actual hardware, some benefits of the R600 for me, standard PoE. Now the newer Ubiquiti access points are finally moving towards standard PoE and not the proprietary stuff like the ACLR. And we get the second port here which is a daisy chaining port, it's a switch port. You can add another access point uplink, or you can put a device on it, or you could even hook up a switch to it. So this allows for a straight, uh, better and more complex configurations. So these were $115 on eBay, cheaper than the cost of those. I actually, I paid almost enough money just from the Nano HD to buy both of these. So uh, cost of investment, was not much and then as far as how easy it is to set it up and use it that's what the next video is about i've already got one installed it's actually running the wireless for the entire house right now and it is my master ap and in the next video we're going to go ahead and update the firmware on this because this still has the stock firmware that is used with the wireless controller we're going to put the unleashed firmware on it and show you how easy it is to set it up and configure everything so i hope you guys uh like the introduction video uh actually before we go let me talk about one more thing that's really important about this video series and why I'm doing it. Enterprise grade stuff, fixing some broken stuff, that's good. Also, you need to have somebody who's willing to go out there and actually try some stuff because I'll tell you what's happening right now with Ubiquity and why I'm gonna get some flack. <laughs> it has the biggest fanboy following right now. The, um, the, the accessibility of these devices is really great. You can buy them on Amazon, you can buy them on eBay, you can buy them from Ubiquity, and they're not expensive to get into, and it's much better than the crap that your internet service provider gives you. The flexibility of putting one of these in the middle of your house and uh, mounted on the ceiling is going to give you better coverage than having that router in the corner of your room where the internet service provider put your connection. However, because it's so popular and because they work, one person is going to tell the next person this is the best stuff ever then that person is going to go ahead and buy it on recommendation and also say this is the best stuff ever and it has spread and spread and spread to the point now that everybody on the planet seems to think ubiquity is the best stuff out there it is very good for the money and i like this stuff especially the access points that's the one thing from ubiquity i strongly recommend their firewalls not so much they're not really that fully featured the, the hardware power on them is not very great if you try to run a VPN and some, an IPS and stuff, they're just going to die until you pay for the big money on the big ones. And then the switches, like I said, they're not very good either, not for the money. Uh, but they're decent switches, but they're not fully featured, they're not very cheap. So the access points are good, but they're not the best. I've already found that this right here is better than both of those by a long shot. And if it wouldn't be for somebody willing to actually go and test this stuff and tell you about it that could have been another person just saying ubiquity is the best thing ever every forum i go to ubiquity is the best thing ever it's not the best thing ever at work we took our cisco access points out of production and started replacing them with ubiquities on some uh, outside point-to-point -point links the cisco's stayed up for five six seven eight years and never died unless they got struck by lightning the ubiquities i've put up seven of them and i've already had two seven pairs, so 14 altogether. Two of them have already failed in one year. So yeah, they're cheaper. And even if I replace one a year, it's still gonna be cheaper than Cisco. But be wise about what you're paying for. It's not the best thing out there. 
And if you really want the best thing out there that you can get in your home environment, don't be afraid to go get used enterprise gear because even though this is used, this was once upon a time like $1,000 and you're just not gonna get the exact same thing for $100 and $1,000. It's gonna be a little bit better even if it's got some age. So that's pretty much the introduction video. I think we covered all the points I really wanted to get. In the next video, it'll be a technical video. We'll go ahead and start actually configuring this guy. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you in the next video.